My name is Matt Johannesson. I'm the director of cloud services at Noveta. Noveta is an advanced analytics company that focuses primarily on defense and national security uh, workloads. I'm really happy to tell you a story today about how we were able to go out into the field with Amazon's disaster response team that Ramesh just mentioned. Um, but before we do that, just a couple topics that we're going to cover today. A little bit of background about me. Um, I, I want to tell you about something called Operation Convergent Response, which is actually uh, an event hosted by Verizon every year. We're going to go into a little bit of solution architecture about how we use the Snowball Edge device, specifically the compute optimized version. And then we'll talk a little bit about our solution that involves something IoT, our platform called Aegeon, and machine learning all running at the edge, whether it be in a completely disconnected environment or when you do get connectivity. So, just a little bit of background. I wear two hats in our organization. My first job is to manage our alliance with AWS. So I'm the, um, what they call the, the, the alliance lead or the, uh, the person responsible for working with the partner team to make use of all of the different products and services as they come out and get them in front of our customers as fast as possible. I also sit in a group called Special Projects, which gets to work on interesting rapid prototyping efforts like the one that we're going to talk about today, which involves bringing our mission-proven solutions to new use cases. And we're really excited about how our C4 ISR platform is helping disaster response. When I'm not doing either of those two things, I have two young kids and I love being outside. So first, what is Operation Convergent Response? It's a fantastic opportunity to go out in the field with Verizon and AWS to actually serve during live scenarios at a place called the Guardian Centers in Perry, Georgia. The Guardian Centers is a full-scale facility that can simulate things like floods, counter-terror situations. I literally saw helicopters landing on buildings at this place two weeks ago, right? So the idea is Operation Convergent Response gives first responders, disaster management, and law enforcement groups an opportunity to come together to see how solutions work. This is not like your average trade show where somebody's up on stage or at a booth doing a demo. You have to set up your solution in the field so that people can see how it works with actors and responders actually doing their critical mission. So AWS, the disaster response team, invited Noveta to participate because they thought we could help solve a hard problem that many first responders face during these disasters, which is simply keeping track of people and critical equipment. So imagine different volunteer groups showing up in the Bahamas. How do we put them all on the same map so that we can ensure something as simple as health and safety of the very volunteers that are trying to help? Well, to do that, Let's talk about the tech a little bit. And I'm going to keep this very high level. I'm actually doing a chalk talk later on this morning if you guys want to come see some of the, the lower level detail. But it's very simple. Let's deploy inexpensive IoT sensors to start, so basic GPS trackers, right? And HD security cameras, cameras that you can just order on Amazon.com, like a, an access ball cam, we call them. You see them hanging off the sides of buildings or in offices. Nothing, nothing too crazy. We're going to get all that data into the compute optimized Snowball Edge so that people can use it in the field. Digging a little deeper, I want to tell you about a, a couple of things here. Show of hands, how many people have heard of something called LoRaWAN? Okay, good group, and not all just Noveta people up here in the front. So LoRaWAN is an emerging IoT technology. It's very popular in Europe and Asia for industrial applications. It stands for long range, low power. So think battery devices that can communicate over digital RF over very long distances. The gateway is basically an antenna that's going to collect signal from all the sensors. The Snowball Edge, obviously, we're using it as our central processing hub. Ramesh did a great job showing you a couple of use cases across various uh, industries for that, and that's exactly what we want to do. We want to bring our software on the Snowball we actually had four compute instances running on the Snowball. We want to get it running quickly. We want to use machine learning via Greengrass. And then we also want to be able to connect to a connected environment. So you can imagine large organizations like AWS want to know where their people are, but they're not going to send the whole company to the Bahamas, right? They might want to see that from afar. So when connectivity does come in, how can we leverage the features of the Snowball Edge to get the data back to the cloud and replicate it there. It's worth mentioning 
that we were able to get a very high power Windows instance running on the Snowball Edge. So for those of you that have Windows workloads, we were able to provision an instance using the documentation available to get Windows Server 2016 running with our application on the compute optimized device. So, a little bit about IoT, something called Aegean, and machine learning. For reference, Aegean is a C4 ISR platform that the military currently uses for things like base protection and force protection abroad. It's designed to bring any sort of sensor you can imagine into the same platform. So whether it's video cameras that can be controlled centrally, whether it's radar systems, LIDAR systems, doesn't matter, it all comes to the same single pane of glass. But let's start with the sensors. So these LoRaWAN sensors, what are they? It's basically a small puck-sized device that takes a GPS signal, sends its coordinates, its sensor ID, and a timestamp and a battery voltage, very important, up to about 10 miles away in mixed urban settings from just three AAA batteries. These sensors cost around $50 each and can be distributed in the field with something as simple as a zip tie, a piece of Velcro, or just in your pocket. We developed a custom application to scan that QR code and reattribute it. So it doesn't matter if I assign it to a person, or I assign it to a vehicle, or an aircraft. It doesn't matter. If I have a pile of sensors, I'm gonna get signal from them and put them on the same map. To give you a sense of how that works, we have a little video here that we captured from our time out at Operation Convergent Response that I wanna share with you now. All right, so that just gives you a sense a little bit of where we were placing the sensors, how easy it is to put it on a vehicle, a person, really doesn't matter. By the end of OCR, Verizon had asked us to put, thing, put sensors on the transportation vehicles that were taking spectators to each of the scenarios. We were covering a scenario at the airport over a mile away, and we were able to reattribute those sensors within seconds. So imagine a large box of sensors showing up in the Bahamas or another disaster site and very quickly being able to keep track of people like news crews, volunteer organizations, and any piece of equipment so that you can then see where it is. So on to seeing where it is. So this is a, uh, an idea <clears throat> we had to show how Aegean works. So as the data is coming in, you'll see you know, a boat moving around in what is what the, the flood scenario, as they call it. So they have the ability to flood a whole town at Guardian Centers. You'll see as the boat is moving, we get a dot on the map for where that boat is. All we have to do to change the icon to boat is use that mobile app I mentioned, say this is a watercraft, and then we get a boat icon. If it's a person, it'll show up on a dot, much like around the edges uh, where you see people walking around. So we could start by just giving the sensors to team leads. We don't have to give them to everybody. We could just say, you know, hey, there's a news crew that wants to go out to the edge near the hurricane. Let's give them a sensor so we can see where they are. Um, Aegean provides the ability to bring in new sensors on the fly. There's a member in the audience here who spent three days nonstop integrating different types of drone footage, other sensors. It's built to bring in any sort of data right at the edge without needing to customize the code. Now to give you a sense of our setup, 
we were set up in two places. This is the disconnected environment. So we roll out in a you know, truck, right? Set up a tent, and in that tent, you see the snowball edge with a screen. That screen was being used to conduct safety briefings for everybody that was coming through to watch the flood scenario. Right there at the edge, did not require any network connectivity whatsoever. All four instances to power the solution, just running right there at the edge. Now when the backhaul did come in, we were able to send the data up to an instance of Aegean hosted in EC2, the US East, and we were able to bring that application up at the conference building about a mile away at the Joint Operations Center. So if there is central control over disaster response, which there typically is, we can show all of these different pieces of data on that map in one place. Now you could do that all over the world really quick and easily. Um, so we were really happy to get to test this. We don't often get to test this in a public sense. Um, there was a medium Earth orbit backhaul set up, so we were doing all of this over extremely low bandwidth comms. Our integration specialist was able to downsample the video feeds specifically tailored to that low bandwidth using the snowball to get the video back to the Joint Operations Center. The median Earth orbit satellite was good, but it's not as good as what we all expect from our internet service providers at, with our cable modems and whatnot. So the last thing I want to talk to you a little bit about, and what's a talk at reInvent in 2019 without talking about machine learning? We were out there testing a new model. So one of the things Novetta does is we have a, um, a machine learning center of excellence, which is basically a lab to test new machine learning and AI ideas. And we were doing a new model that involves both computer vision and natural language processing. I'm sure everybody in this room has searched for images online. And when you do one of those searches, sometimes you get things that are relevant to the search term that you used. Well, what if we could automate that for first responders? And we had, say, a list of keywords that the cameras need to automatically look for in the field. What if we could retrain those models for different locations based on how people talk about things like danger, vehicles, people, to the locality that we're in. That's what this model does. And we were really excited to be able to pull the feeds from all the different cameras that we set up, whether it be a commodity-based camera, like the, the inexpensive IoT camera you see strapped there to the, the tripod, or a higher quality PTZ camera set up on the, the mast of that truck that I showed you. Being able to use the Snowball Edge to process all of that video locally with green grass is exactly what we were able to do in the field.